Cinema Classics is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. For the details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. I'm John DeSando. This is Cinema Classics. And today... Yeah. Look, we both have great families. We come from great families. Uh -huh. But you know there are dysfunctional families that you'd have to... Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily... <laughs> think that our families and dysfunctional families are mutually exclusive. Anyway, in movies, yeah, we have some winners. Right. Why are we talking about dysfunctional families? Just random? Did we just spin the wheel? And no. I really, in a, sh a way, I, I kind of like love the Coopers. Mm -hmm. And so as we were talking, it struck me that maybe there are... I mean, this oh. is a dysfunctional family. Yeah. And so we're, as we usually do in cinema classes, we are not mired in the past. No. We begin with what's current. That's right. And we reel back. Or we start from wherever we want and just pontificate we, aimlessly. I, are you saying that we do exactly what we want to do? Exactly. <laughs> we do what we want. Now, I think the best one Yeah, I have featured here. The Royal Tenenbaum. Yes, I do. That is such a great <laughs> movie. Probably one of the best movies of that decade. Oh, gosh. Gene Hackman. As a Potter familias. Uh huh. <laughs> and notoriously difficult to work with on that movie. Did you know that? Ah, he was so awful to Wes Anderson <laughs> that, uh, you know, it was. Uh, stories are legend, but Bill Murray had to kind of step in and, and calm uh, Gene Hackman down. I don't know why he was so <laughs> difficult, but he was. Uh, of course, he's just. It, it, there's no reason why the kids shouldn't be whacked out because he is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's gone to live in a hotel room by himself. Yeah, <laughs> it's so. You know, the tone that Wes Anderson strikes with that movie is uh, vaguely farcical, um, whimsical, and yet it never loses its emotional gravity. You know, um, there's some very powerful. I think emotional scenes that still ring very true and the ending is is a doozy okay and now we get the, the Griswolds mm -hmm. in National Lampoon yeah are they dysfunctional you know I mean, just because Chevy Chase is an idiot <laughs> does that make them dysfunctional okay uh, I don't I'm asking. I don't know. Yeah, you know does, I don't know. I just is immediately just... thought they were, but if you ask me the yeah, question, I don't, I, don't... I, I don't think they are. I think they're just representative of a sort of goofy Midwestern ideal that seems a little silly. Well, know? talking about goofy, what about raising Arizona? That's. <laughs> I don't even know if they're a family. Yet. They're not really a family. Well, they're looking to make a. They're family. looking to make a dysfunctional family. <laughs> they would be dysfunctional if they made one. I. Actually, you know, that's an interesting question. No, there it, it doesn't qualify because Holly Hunter and Nicolas Cage <laughs> kidnap a child. I know they that, w that they don't keep, so there's no family there to speak of. However, at the end of that movie, Nicolas Cage has this monologue where he's dreaming, and in the future, you catch a glimpse of this very large family that they want to have, oh, okay. and it looks really beautiful. Oh, and, not right. dysfunctional. Your memory is fantastic. Now, here's one I think we might agree is dysfunctional. Mm. The Torrance is in The Shining. Yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> but well. again, it just comes down to, you know, what makes that... I'm going to ask you what makes that family dysfunctional. Is that the... The axe murdering part of it? <laughs> no. The, the, fa the fact that... Uh, it may be accelerated, but they're all going off into the fringe. Mm -hmm. The kid... It has these visions. Mm -hmm. Dad is becoming more and more monstrous. Uh, you know, even though it's a, a short time when they're just vacationing yeah. at this place, it, it, to me, metaphorically, it's just how a family can become. That's great. So, like, <laughs> if you ratchet down all the melodrama, what you're left with is is a, a, a sort of microscopic look at the American family, right? Like yeah. a, a yeah. dad who's dissatisfied right. in his work. And who's just going crazy, all work and no play, makes Jack a yes, dull boy. Yes. Uh, the kid who's, you know, a dreamer, yep. uh, not connected with the dad, Good and, and then the emotionally fragile mother. That's yeah. great. Well, maybe not quite as whacked out as that family. 
American Beauty, Kevin mm -hmm. Spacey, mm -hmm. the father who was disconnecting and, right. and connecting with uh, a high school beauty, friend right. of his daughter. Yeah, his wife, Annette Benning is all, is having an affair. Uh, she is sort of emotionally detached because she's fragile. She pulls back from right. real emotions. She tries to avoid real emotions. Um, the daughter having a hard time. The daughter struggling with, uh, you know, her budding sexuality. Right. Um, and then, yeah, Kevin Spacey at the center of it all. Dissatisfied at work. Yeah. And, um, you know, midlife crisis. Kind of that, that, that is... I probably the quintessential dysfunctional family. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it does not end well. Yeah, it gets closer to the center of say American life than the others that we have discussed, mm -hmm. which are really fringe. Well, it appears to represent a reality yeah. that we can identify with. Now here's one that I know that you you'll weigh in on and I don't know how you're gonna uh, respond to this as a dysfunctional family. The Corleones? Um uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I wouldn't have thought that. I mean well, I know I guess that. one That's could why I extrapolate it. a sort of dysfunctional, a working dysfunctional definition of the Corleones. Um, but I don't know. Now, well, the contrast in there between the family life they may perceive that they have, mm -hmm. the religious aspects, and then murder. Yeah. And they seem to coexist. So to me, that's what, the reason I put it in there was that I knew you would question it, and rightfully so. Uh, but I think family, like mafia, is at the heart of what they want. Right. Yeah. Now, what they have is completely different. Although we'd like, there are some people we'd like to murder. Well, we don't. I, I will turn this back <laughs> around on you. You brought up The Shining and said if we ratchet this down a little bit okay. and and uh, pull out all the the melodrama horror elements of it, you're you're left with a pretty sort of stark look at. A typically dysfunctional family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, typically dysfunctional heterosexual nuclear family. Yeah. What about if you pull all the all the stuff, the melodrama out of The Godfather? What are you left with? Huh. You know what I mean? Uh, if you take the yeah, mafia yeah, yeah, part yeah, yeah, out yeah, yeah. and you just have a these this. Yeah. You ha well, you have um, you have a child like Sonny, who is pulling himself away. From the family, Sonny. <coughs> yeah, right. James no, Con. No. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. hot shot. The yeah, hot temper. Yeah, one. who potentially is a lot of trouble for the family. You have Al Pacino, mm -hmm. uncertain of his role. Well, yeah, you have Al Pacino, who is like the golden boy at one point, and then slowly loses his soul. Right, right, right. Uh, to you know, one could say business. We're going to pull the mafia metaphor out of it. Yeah, yeah. He loses his soul to money and power. Great. Yes. Uh, yeah. Fredo is the crazy, the oh, yeah. totally dysfunctional yeah, one. Good who one. can't, you know, he's he's the man child. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Who just doesn't seem smart enough to kind of put all the pieces together. <laughs> and then there's Connie, uh, Talia Shire. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Is, you know, in that typically Italian setting, the daughter. She doesn't have any anything to do with the family business. She's not taken seriously, um, and then she just ends up in these really awful relationships. Sure, and it, what, it, would she be the most innocent, sweetest one of the whole family? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay, uh, in the, a current movie called Brooklyn, mm -hmm. there is an, a, an Italian eating scene that I, I want your family scene. I want you yeah. to see. Okay, it, it's very good. It's. It's different from any Italian dinner you've seen because it's closest to what I've experienced in my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has some wonderful moments like a very smart-mouthed eight-year-old kid. Oh, uh, is that right? Uh, yeah, okay. they bring, they're bringing the Irish girl in to the Italian family. Yeah, um, Saoirse Ronan. Right, yeah. And she's learned how to twirl her spaghetti yeah. <laughs> just to deal with them. That's like, great. Irish Italians. Yeah, know? yeah. Yes. Um, There's one on your list there. I, I was wondering yeah. if you were going to get to. Yeah. Uh, ordinary people. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I think, is maybe the quintessential dysfunctional family movie. Yeah. And and what uh, what interested me about that was, I mean, it's a it's a tragic occurrence 
that would, the loss of the child mm -hmm. that would seem to propel it into dysfunction? So I was thinking before they have that, do, do we see before they have that to see whether in fact they are yeah. a dysfunction? Well, that's a great question. The movie, if I remember correctly, uh, opens post the death of the, the yeah. young man. Right. And you're really seeing the aftermath. Yeah. You know, you're exploring the aftermath of that, by the way, directed by Robert Redford. But, um, you know, I wonder if the, the death of the young man doesn't just put into stark relief the dysfunction that already exists. Yeah, that's what I wondered. Yeah, I wondered. Do, we, do you remember if we get flashbacks? No, I don't think we get flashbacks, but we get, through the Timothy Hutton character, uh, you know, um, peak behind the mother's relationships with with the respective boys okay, yeah and it seems to me that there was an emotional chill there to begin with but I don't know that's a good question maybe we'd have to re-examine it all getting a little wilder yeah grifters oh man I barely remember that movie. <laughs> Angelica Houston Angelica uh, Houston and Annette Benning and yeah right yeah, you remember I remember that. the movie yeah. and yeah. I don't either it's just I don't really remember that as a family but yeah, they are. Are they? Yeah, uh, because John Cusack, I think, is is her son. Okay. And she's taught him <laughs> grifting, mm. and I I just love theirs. I, I love their what they're grifting, and I got to think they're an a, an extraordinary family, and dysfunction. And of course, we carefully avoided defining dysfunctional. Yeah, I'm right. very happy we did because it allows us to bring in. Families like that. On my way down, though, I was I was going to ask you that. Like, how are we defining? I know, this, you know? I know. It, uh, Is it just, you know, what about you know? We've looked at, at pretty much everything yeah. as uh, you know the typically heterosexual family. Um, what about the family in the kids are all right? Remember that? Oh yeah, Is that Annette Benning again. Jeez, yeah. Annette Benning specializes yeah. in dysfunctional yeah. family yeah. movies. Um, Annette Benning and Julianne Moore. And they're the lesbian couple. Yeah, yeah. Julianne Moore yeah. has the affair with Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, what happens to me is they seem to me to be a pretty cool family. Mm -hmm. I would not have called them dysfunctional. Okay. And because, are you going to say that because there's a lesbian aspect, it's dysfunctional? No, no. I don't think we can say that anymore. No, I wasn't going to say that oh, at all. Okay. I was going to say that just based on the relationship that they have. Uh, there's something not there's there's something that propels Julianne Moore into the affair. There's some disconnect there between those two characters. Right, yeah. And then I I'm trying to remember how their relationships work out with their uh, their daughters. I think they have two daughters. I can't I, I can't even remember that now. I just uh, I just remember that family struggling to come together, and they do. It's it's yeah. actually really yeah. a happy ending. Well, it's a it's a great example for us to end with. Because our dilemma is what actually is dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And from all of this, we can extrapolate the fact that our families are dysfunctional, whether we like yeah. it or not. I mean, can we even <laughs> see dysfunction? Can we see the forest for the trees? We're all so mired in it. Yes. I mean, unless someone picks up an axe, I think you're all right.